Again, I'm Ramsey Dewey. I live in the city of Shanghai in the People's Republic of China. I've lived here for about 15 years. I am an American-born British national living in China. I often get asked, Ramsey, why do you talk that way? I don't know what way that is, but uh, that's, that's where I'm coming from geographically. So if that explains anything about the way I talk, my voice, etc., if that helps you cope, great. So what should we talk about? Hmm. I was thinking today about winning. I'm in the business of combat sports. I'm a combat sports coach. I specialize in the sport of mixed martial arts, coaching MMA fighters to win cage fights. That is my primary occupation outside of the internet. In real life, that's how I spend my days. So I concern myself a lot with winning. And I was thinking about my childhood and how, as a child, I was the skinny little wimp who never got picked for the team. If we were playing dodgeball, I would be the last one chosen for teams. I was that guy. And did I lack confidence? Boy, did I ever. I was the kind of kid who thought winning is something that happens to other people, not to me. And the first time I remember winning something, it was actually a random raffle in a science class. I think it was in seventh grade, a seventh grade science class. The teacher decided to have a random raffle to give away a t-shirt, this black t-shirt with a picture of an anthropomorphic cartoon shark on the front and the shark's holding a surfboard and it had some sort of surfing slogan. I don't know why that was so appealing. We lived in a small farming town in Idaho, a landlocked area. I'd never seen the ocean, never been surfing, didn't know anything about it, but everybody wanted that shirt. And everybody in the class was entered into this random raffle. The teacher drew out a name and it happened to be mine. And I won. Whoa, I won something for the first time in my life. I won something, a contest, even though it was a random chance contest that had absolutely nothing to do with my skills, my abilities, or my effort. But it didn't matter at that time. I felt special. I felt special for a long time. I won. This was proof that I was not doomed to be a loser forever. Whoa, this was mind-blowing to me. I wore that shirt until it fell apart. <laughs> I felt a certain pride wearing it, uh, even though it was completely unmerited and unwarranted, but I felt this certain pride because it seemed to be proof, once again, I was not fated to be a loser forever. Weirdly, it was kind of a game-changing moment for me. My second experience with winning, as a child, I grew up, as I said, in a small farming town, and every year we had a county fair and a rodeo. And at the county fair, they would have various contests, usually involving livestock and produce. People would bring in the biggest pumpkin for the biggest pumpkin contest. They'd have the prize pig, the prize cow, etc. But they would also have an art contest, and this was open to all ages. And I had a certain skill with drawing and painting. I was pretty good at it. And so uh, every year I would enter artwork to the county fair. And as a teenager, I was at the point where I was pretty decent at it. And I actually won some prizes, some blue ribbons, some second place ribbons sometimes. And this was a different kind of winning because this, this took effort. I had to do something. I had to be good to win. But at the same time, the winning was not clearly objective. Not clearly objective. Why? Because there's a judge. And that judge is the deciding factor. Now, of course, I had to be good. I had to be uh, subjectively better than the other contestants in the art contest. But at the same time, at the end of the day, the win was up to somebody else deciding whether or not I won. And usually, if I didn't win a prize, I would look at the competition and think to myself, what are they doing that I'm not? What makes their picture 
better than mine? What makes it worthy of the judge's decision? It's a weird thing because once you submit your work, the power to win is completely out of your hands. You are at the mercy of a judge. There's something about that that I didn't like. I deeply did not like it. I didn't participate in sports as a child. My mother was very opposed to the idea of uh, sports competition in general, but especially contact sports like football and wrestling. Things where her children, her precious children, might get hurt. And okay, I get it. I, I understand a parent's concern. So I didn't get into combat sports until after I left home. I graduated from high school at the age of 17, went to college, and I started training in Taekwondo. It was my first martial art that I started learning. And when I started competing in Taekwondo and later kickboxing and later Muay Thai and later mixed martial arts and Jiu-Jitsu, this was a highly transformative experience for a lot of reasons. Now, I lost my first fight, and it was a pretty bad beatdown, a three-round decision loss, and I took a lot of hits, man. In those three rounds, I took a beating, but I wouldn't quit. I prided myself on this idea. I wouldn't quit, no matter how bad the beating got, no matter how much I got outclassed, I wouldn't quit, and at the end of the fight, I was bloodied up, bruised. I had an ear that was partially detached and had to be surgically reattached, sewn back on my left ear. And that was, that was a fight that was, <laughs> and gave me some PTSD a little bit, thinking about that idea, sitting in the emergency room afterward. But I remember feeling weird sitting in the emergency room. I just got beat up for three rounds. I had the mental fortitude to tough it out, but I didn't have the will to win. I didn't have the will to compete. And I was reflecting on my idea of winning and losing because before that time, it seemed very much that winning and losing was, was arbitrary, random, and subjective. But this was different. This was an objective loss. I didn't lose because of random chance. I didn't lose because... A judge decided my work wasn't up to snuff, even though it was a judge's decision. I lost because of me. I lost because I was not good enough. I was not competing hard enough. I wasn't fighting intelligently enough. It was all on me, and that was a little bit painful and incredibly awakening. Incredibly so. So, what do we do about that? What do we do about that, friends? I dwelled on this for a long time, and I started to make it my goal to get out of the complacent mindset of being an inactive participant in my own life and to start participating actively by making it my goal to win. And eventually I made it my goal to be a combat sports coach to help facilitate the process of helping fighters win fights. And to this day, that remains my mission statement as a coach, to help fighters win fights. I had a realization years ago, and it went something like this. And it was a little disillusioning and depressing and at the same time very freeing the realization that the only people you will ever beat in a fight are those that fall into one of these three categories someone who made more mistakes than you that's number one someone who made more mistakes than you number two is someone who is weaker or less skilled or less athletic in some way than you, someone who is less talented, someone who is less than you. Number three is someone who is potentially better, someone who is a potentially better competitor, a better athlete, more skilled, etc. But 
they have some sort of a handicap. They're injured that day. They're sick that day or otherwise just out of their game. Why is this shocking? Because we tend to think of a contest of combat sports, a, a fight especially. We fight to see who's the better man. Not really. We fight to see who's the better athlete that day, the better fighter, the better competitor that day, who wins, who loses. But in, in our mind, in our guts, it feels like we fight to see who's the better man. But the reality is we're only going to beat people who are not as good as we are on that particular day. Again, that was, oof. That was kind of depressing, and, and here's why. Because there's this fantasy idea, and it's often perpetuated by films and movies, where we often see a weaker, smaller person beat up larger, stronger, super technical fighters in some superhero or superheroine type of fashion. But the reality is, yeah, that's a fantasy. That's a movie. That's a work of fiction. We're only going to beat people who are not as good as us. And that might fuel your ego and make you feel, I'm number one. I'm number one. Pat yourself on the back. Oh, you're so good. Except, uh, when I learned to compete, to really be a competitor and to chase that dream of being a good combat sports coach. It is freeing this idea that all you have to do to win fights has become the better athlete, the superior technician, and the more aggressive competitor in that situation. All you have to do, right? As if it were simple. Well, it is simple. It's just work, and it's lots of it, and it's consistent work. And as a coach, it's not just consistent work working with the same guy. It's consistent work fishing and hunting, trying to recruit the guys who are capable of doing that work and willing to do that work. Building a stable of fighters is a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult thing to manage, especially in a city like this in Shanghai, where essentially I had to pioneer the sport of mixed martial arts because it did not exist. It de facto did not exist here when I first showed up. There were a handful of people who knew what UFC stood for. And I could count them on my fingers. Times have changed. The UFC has since opened its uh, second performance institute here in the city of Shanghai. A lot of professional fighters have started to come out of China. Some of them are pretty good. <sighs> Combat sports is is finally really, really starting to get a foothold now. Ooh, the whole COVID-19 situation, the lockdowns, etc. set us back a bit, but more so than the rest of the world, probably not. We're all kind of in the same boat here in many ways. So, I'm always telling people on the internet after my YouTube videos, for example, thanks for watching, now get out there and train. And once COVID hit, Oh, man, the excuses started coming, but coach, I can't get out there and train because of the lockdowns. If that was you, drop and give me 50 push-ups, son. Do it. Don't talk about it, be about it. Champions are distinct from losers. Why? Because they find solutions. Champions find solutions. Losers find excuses. Men find solutions. Boys find excuses. All right, folks. That's what I've got for today. I'm really just testing out this recording voice talking app on Twitter, trying to make sense of this 
this whole platform. So if you listen to this, let me know what you thought. If the audio came through, if the microphone was working, I have no idea. But thanks for listening. Now get out there and train.